Now, when you know what backtracking is, you will have a chance of using this powerful method to solve another challenging puzzle, which is called 16 diagonals. The goal in this puzzle is to place many diagonals into a square grid such that no two diagonals have a common point, or in other words, they do not touch each other. So we start with a very simple version of this puzzle. In this case, we are given a 3x3 three three grid, and our goal is to place 6 diagonals in, uh, in, this, in this grid. Uh, it is not very difficult for this case, so you see one solution uh, here on the slide. And this is another solution where again we have six diagonals and no two have any common point. Now let's gradually uh, increase the size. Let's consider a 4x4 four four board. Now the question is to place 10 diagonals. It is already not so simple, but here you are. Here, this is a solution where there are 10 diagonals. And now we come to a challenge. In this case, we are given a 5x5 five five grid, and our goal is to place 16 diagonals. You may want to first place such 16 diagonals by hand, and you will find out that it is not so easy. So instead of trying to do this by hand, you may also want to, to implement a backtracking procedure. And this is your exercise, actually. And this is a suggestion for you. So to, to implement a backtracking program for solving uh, this puzzle, you may want to do the following. So consider your 5x5 five five grid. So this is 25 cells which are initially empty, or to be more formal, let's assume that initially we have minus 1 in all these cells. Minus 1 indicates that we haven't yet decide what, decided what to put into, into all these cells. And then you start processing all these cells one by one. Say, uh, you start from the first row and you first consider all the first row, then the second row, then the, the third one, and so on. So for each cell, for the current cell, you do the following. You consider all possibilities for, for this cell. Either it has a diagonal which goes from, from this corner to this corner, or you consider a diagonal which goes from this corner to this corner, or you can see the case when there is no diagonal in this case. So, for example, you, you may store uh, just an array of 25 cells where in each cell uh, you store either minus 1, which means that you haven't yet decided what to put in this, into this cell, or, for example, 0, which corresponds to the fact that there is no diagonal in this case, or 1, if there is a diagonal going from this corner to this corner, or 2, if there is a diagonal going from this corner to this corner. Finally, when you place a new diagonal, when you fill in a new cell, if you place a new diagonal into this cell, you need to check whether it produces any conflicts, whether it touches any other diagonal. And this should be implemented very carefully. And if it, if it doesn't touch, then you, uh, then you continue trying to extend it. If it touches, you stop immediately and you backtrack. Okay? Well, good luck implementing this program.